Lakers. Are we live? What's good, great people? I am Ezel Moon, and I have a special guest in the building today. I have Candace Thompson joining us, known as the Dice Wife. Um, she is, in fact, a chef out of Brooklyn. Man, I really can't wait for this one. Uh, Y'all know, if you know me, you know I love I love food. Um, and I actually love creating food. So hopefully, I can get at least a little bit of knowledge. A Frank Conversation is sponsored by Body by Trini. Go to bodybytrini.com for all you bath and body needs. Honestly. Hello! Hi! <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm well. Welcome to A Frank Conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Mr. Ezo. It's, it's, a, it's an absolute honor. Um, Thank you. I, uh, pleasure. I was going through, you know, going through, uh, you know, uh, perusing the internet, trying to learn about you, learn as much uh, about you as possible. So I have, in fact, uh, created uh, some questions here for you. Okay. Specifically for the guest okay. of, uh, of the evening, our guest of honor, you know. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> Um, that you gathered some questions. I'm excited about it because I was wondering like what you were going to ask. I've watched some of um, your interviews. I always thought they were really dope. So I'm just happy to have the opportunity to meet with you. I'm just sending this out to a few folks. Almost okay. definitely. Uh, so, you know, I wonder, because, uh, you know, you're originally from Brooklyn. And, uh, yes. you know, we know today is, in fact, the uh, 20th year anniversary of 9-11. And, uh, yep. I was wondering if you remember where you were on that day. I absolutely do. Um, be funny, I have twins, so my girls asked me about that earlier. Right. And um, I won't go into how old I was, but <laughs> I remember <laughs> that I was um, on a temp job, a temp assignment. It was an office clerk job. It was actually in a hotel within right. Times Square. And... Ooh. I remember sitting at the desk, literally, because remember, it happened between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. That's how vivid that is to a lot of us that was around during that time. Right. Um, and I remember walking in. I started at 9. I got there about a quarter to, mm -hmm. sitting down, signing in, and they were playing 10, 10 wins. Mm -hmm. And the radio station went dead silent. It was similar to when um, Biggie passed away, when Angie Martinez had to mention it, the radio was dead silent and they said um ladies and gentlemen were were live coverage that um a plane had hit one of the towers right. and it was so confusing because we were like the towers and then again it was happening um live like in real time yes so as we were listening it was just very chaotic it was um one of the worst days that I had to remember, but I was in the city that day and I remember having to walk from Times Square back to Best Eye. I was living in Best Eye at the time. So I'm just grateful to God. I didn't lose anyone mm. um, during 9-11, but all condolences to anyone that's checking in. Hi guys, thank you so much for joining. That's checking in if you guys had any friends or family that you lost during 9-11. Um, My sincere condolences to you guys and you guys are still in our hearts and prayers. Because I know that's really difficult. Most definitely, I uh, most definitely is. You know, I've um, I honestly lost the uh, while. You know, back then, because I I remember where I was. Uh, my my aunt came and uh, came to school and picked up myself and my cousins, um, and uh, it was a uh, crazy fi finding out that you know, I would eventually come to learn that one of my fraternity brothers. Uh, one of the fire, one of the uh, firefighters there will actually pass. Uh, it's 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 wild, you know, because you 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 peruse the internet and you you see so many different theories and things yeah. about it, and it's like you know, man, you know, maybe we should just take this moment just to honor those who passed. You know, absolutely, you know? yeah. yeah. I mean, those conspir conspiracy theories are always going to exist, but at the end of the right. day. What right. what is factual is that there were real people that lost their lives over exactly three thousand, I believe they said. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So on a brighter note, on a brighter right? Note. Also a brighter note, you know, I want 
I want to, you know, it, it's, yeah, you got, you got to, you, you, cause it's, it's right there. You got it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We have to acknowledge it. We have to we have to definitely do. Um, but let's, let's get, let's get, uh, into you. So do, wait, do twins run in your family? Um, I have some twin cousins, mm. but not, it's not prevalent. Um, this just happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. <laughs> It really did. It really did just happen to me. <laughs> They're here. I love them. They're my helpmates. Oh, <laughs> One of my daughters, um, she's heavily into the cooking too. So, oh nice. It's fun. They definitely keep me entertained. <laughs> so, with ones into cooking and the other ones just like, hey, you know what? I call her ones into cooking, and my other one is like Mrs. Do Not. She doesn't do anything. Wow. She she's a gem though, I, and I think it's because she's more artistically creative. Right. So just in her own world. But cooking is art, though, right? Cooking is art, yes, for one of my twins. But my other one, she's really more artsy, like arts and crafts. Oh, okay, will And we'll, okay, okay. we'll paint. So she's just, I just let her be great in her own world and not try to involve her in too much because right. I don't get much. <laughs> <laughs> Most, de Most definitely. What, what, what put you on the culinary path was it you know were you was it something that you were watching while you were coming up well, where what set you down that path um well growing up in a west indian household my family's from jamaica okay i was born here so cooking was a major part of our lives so my mom loved to cook people would ask her to cook certain things um or anything and she would host like a lot of parties because my uncle was um he was a businessman who worked internationally as well as domestically. So he had a lot of different friends. So coming up in Brooklyn, it was a very um, culturally diverse household with respect to family and friends. Right. And my mom was actually an LPN at the time. So her patients were also diverse. So she would literally fuse Caribbean cuisines against the cuisines of her, the people that she supported. Mm -hmm. Um, so I remember one time she had a Jewish lady. She um, serviced an Asian family, nice. an Italian family, and she would just come home and take their dishes, their classic dishes, and fuse them with West Indian dishes. Nice. And she was very, very good at it. And um, I ultimately started this journey mm -hmm. to memorialize her, to pay it forward to her, because regrettably I lost her in 2016. And um, that was something that she wished that she had the opportunity to become a chef. It was one of her dreams. So because that didn't come into fruition, I was like, you know what? Let me do this to, again to memorialize her. And um, it's been therapeutic for me. So that's what... Well, so it's been for it's not only just for yourself but it is also for your mother as well right yeah living um vicariously through a dream that she had that she didn't um wasn't able to fulfill and um cooking was like the highlight of our relationship like we came together a lot over meals right so in an effort to cope with the loss i joined culinary school <laughs> mm. like w within one month, one month of her passing, I joined culinary school. You know, if I if I could dive a little bit deeper into that, sure. Uh, you know, it, it it's a, it's as if you you know you 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 took on you took on that dream. I wonder for you prior, um, was there any other dreams that you may have had when you were that while you were younger? <laughs> when I was younger, I thought I was going to be a rapper. <laughs> Hey, yo. <laughs> I'm, I'm very serious. Um, no, but for real though, like, so at the end no, of this No, I'm, day, I'm you, dead serious. You, yo, so then that means you're going to give us some bars at the end of this thing. <laughs> I don't know. I do that infrequently on my stories when I'm in traffic. Right. But um, it's real out here with Drake's album and Kanye's album, you know. Hey, yo. The bars got to be A1. So Come I on, man. But you, if you, no. you got them, though. You're from... You're from I where hip-hop started. That is true. Um, I'll see if during this conversation I can remember something that I'm comfortable with. Okay. To um, spit. Because it's not... 
I mean, I do still push the pen, but I'm I'm mm -hmm. more into cooking. Let them know. Let them know. Yeah, you be so. in the lab whipping it up, but you not, not just the not just the culinary, but you yeah. really be in there. You no, know. I really, I really do. But for me, the other day, so the other night, and shout out to Made by K Kitchen who checked in. Um, I mentioned that I'm a hip hop enthusiast. So a lot of the work I do, I think if you're a hip hop artist that like really listens to lyrics and has an appreciation for punchlines, metaphors, and analogies, I think I would hope that some people catch some of my punchlines and analogies that I use with food and um, how I describe certain things. I don't know. You guys can tell me, but I'm always doing that because rapping and writing, writing will always be a part of my life. And when I was young and I thought I was going to be a rapper, it was, I was in a group with two guys at that. So they really challenged me. And it was, I was always very competitive in making sure those bars hit because I was the only female in the group. So I was definitely trying to make Lauren Hill proud. <laughs> yeah. you know, so would you, would you say that Lauren Hill was one of your bigger? Absolutely. Any Absolutely. other ones? Um, it would be Lauren Hill. Mm hmm Eminem, mm. Biggie, of course, Jada Kiss. Mm. Um, I said four. Of course, Drake. Yeah. Um, JV, of course. Yeah. So that gives us six. I usually stop at six. You stop at six? Yeah. Okay, let me ask you something, mm -hmm. and let's be let's 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 just sure. let's actually get into this. I'm gonna, I want to I, you know I already have a list of things for you, but I want to go down this. Sure. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's let's talk about this. Do you feel like an artist can be? Like. Do you feel like a knife can be too sharp? The the I, I say that I because I want to preface this question I have for you. Do you feel like Eminem has reached a point inside of his career where he's too good at what he does? That is a great question. And you have to respect it, right? Right. Now, there's two parts to that question. Mm -hmm. Number one, when I think of Eminem as a lyricist, yeah. I'm not looking at color. And that, that, was, that would be one of the only times that I would make a reference like that, that I don't see color. Right. Because having, being a writer and listening to that man's punchlines, how he, people don't realize, like, Eminem literally does construction with words. I'm saying. <laughs> like, when somebody is nice, they're mm. nice. Yes. And if you listen to lyrics in detail... Mm -hmm. And you can really pick up the bars and the contrast if you have that air. You cannot argue how nice that man is. Exactly. You really can't. Exactly. This man, his vocabulary is impeccable. Right. And the way he can formalize sentence structures and make them bars, yeah. in addition to making those words Mel melodic to the beat that's profound it is like it gives me goosebumps it, it that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what i'm saying and you know yeah. what what's what's so um amazing to me is the fact you know i will because i watch different interviews just so that i can get i can learn right and one of the interviews that i watched was with Lil Wayne interviewing him and you know they do this they both do this thing where they go back and they Google their past lyrics to make sure that they haven't said something. Again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I'd add Lil Wayne to it. Seven. I'm sorry, Weezy. I don't even know how that happened. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lil Wayne uh, has to be on there as well. Yeah. yeah no, no, most definitely. He's, he, uh, he deserves it. You know, he, de he, he deserves it. And the thing is, it's not as if like he's even... He's it's not like he stopped, right? He's actually mm -hmm. continued to gotten to have gotten better over time. Yeah. Which you know, if if I feel like if people pay attention to Wayne, it's like you you see it. Like he's you know Yeah, you definitely um saw the progression in his career. Little Wayne started at what, fourteen? Right. That's very, very young. And yep. um they had him in a studio, like that was his whole life. 
right. in the studio. And um, the more you write <laughs> and the more life experience you have, the stronger your verses can be. Little Wayne just had a gift very young. He was very, very articulate as well. And he applied that to the street and his environment, what he saw around him. You know, I want to actually, because, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I kind of want to talk about, you know, this kind of takes me on another tangent. And Ooh. I promise I will jump back to the questions that I have for you. It's always about music and meals for me. So that's, I, I'm excited about this. Bit. So, so let's, keep, let's keep going then. Okay. Let's talk about Certified Lover Boy real fast. Please, I'm ready. <laughs> what on a scale of one to ten? Give me a number, and then I'm gonna. I, I will. I want to. I want to give my opinion, and then you give your opinion on a scale of one to ten. Okay. My relationship with Drake is like this. I love um, lyrics, street street shit. Excuse my language. <laughs> you good. You good. Um, when. Drake is giving us that more gritty street. Right. I'm a number one fan because I love r and I'm not a big R&B fan. There's a set amount of artists that I would listen to, right. but I'm always for the streets because I'm from Flatbush, Brooklyn. So that's how right. I was groomed. Right. So when he's giving me street bars, and there's some love songs that I like, but if he sticks to just street and life and the experience in the industry, mm -hmm. Drake's album is a 10. But I feel like on that album, there was, what, 14 tracks? On this last one? CLB, yeah. CLB was... I believe it was about 14 20, tracks. Wait, hold on. 14 or 24? I think it's like 20-something. Give me like two seconds. I'll, pull, I'll verify. No right. problem. Um, see, uh, it was a total of 21 songs, an hour, 26 minutes. Okay. So out of those 21 songs, I feel like he had about eight, like, mm -hmm. street songs, eight to nine. And mm -hmm. the rest of it was more for the ladies. Right. So, and um, his struggles with women. So cohesively, I would give the album an eight. Because of my preference of what I like to hear. Mm -hmm. And out of the 21 tracks, it was more so lover boy than um, the street stuff that he gives them. But... Overall, it was a great body of work. Mm. Okay. And what I like about Drake is he definitely gave you um, variety with respect to genres. Okay. On, on one catalog, so. Okay. Eight, eight point five. Eight point five for you. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you why. You? Let me tell you why I gave this man a six. Oh, okay. Let me tell you why I gave this man a six, and this is, and this is, and this is coming from someone that you know. I basically feel like I grew up with Drake in a yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the the time where he was budding mm -hmm. was the time where I was transitioning as as a as a man into adulthood and things of that nature. Okay. Right? So I was I've been comparing Drake to Drake. You know what I'm saying? Like and what I feel like what he gave us with this body of work was basically views part 2. Like oh. he like he gave us, mm. like he gave us, think like let's 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 go through this. Okay. <laughs> he gave us the amazing intro. So mm -hmm. that I'll say like it's like he he gave us the amazing intro. Poppy's home was him with with bars. Mm -hmm. with, um, and I can I can see how people will say, all right, that's cool. I did like the Nikki reference. That was fire to me. Mm -hmm. Because you know, like, it, it, like father mother dynamic. I wish would have dropped a verse, but right. hey, you know, it's just something that didn't happen. Girls, girls want girls. I'm thinking, eh, that's it's 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 cool, you know. Yeah. But I'm still like, it's like him with a hot artist. It's basically, uh, it, it's a to me. I feel like it's a callback to something that he's done before, I and mean, a lot, a I lot, of, a lot of this. A lot of the album to me was basically that callbacks to things that he's done before, but nothing to where like he's kind of like up the ante. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like he's set up the bar so high for himself now. In my eyes, you know what I'm saying? As someone like I said, who's what we we through every album, you know. And I'm someone like I said, I, I lean towards the R&B side. I can't lie to you. I, I enjoy that part, but. He set the bar so high that, like, now it's like, dang, well, 
he's not really it's like he he gave the sa he used the same formula in this out al in this album that we've seen before you got the future features you got the the the, the same the similar beat switches uh you know some of the some of the some of the some of the songs had already leaked you know and and the the, the leaks that came that came back up they're pretty they're pretty deep they're, they're, they were pretty good songs but it's just for me i'm just like i don't know i'm expecting more the way that jay-z came in on that verse like that to me that was like the that was a, like one of the most fire parts of the of the of the album and 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 giving him and his verses well i'll give him that as well I'll give him that too but yeah, man, I feel like it was like just like views. I can Part understand two. why you say the views, and it was because of all the R and B tracks. It that that that, that too. I think that had a lot to do with it because that I would agree with you with there. It. Yeah, and but, um, mm -hmm. he, but like you said, you know, he goes with the variety. He hit the same. He hit the same metrics with the variety that we. He did. Before. He absolutely did because he yep. gave you the Afro beats. He's giving you the pop. He's giving you the street, and he's giving you the R and B. That's a classic formula for a Drake, right? Right. But why I give him the eight point five? In addition to the album, this guy had six singles and if not three features. But prior to the album, mm. so. I was thinking about it the other day. Drake literally goes into the studio, mm -hmm. say what's on his mind, and the tracks chart. Right. There, there's no question about it. They all chart. Like, with the, the five singles that he had separate from this album, mm -hmm. charted. Yeah. <laughs> Not many artists can say Not that. Not many artists can say that. Not You're many right. artists can just go in their studio and like, oh, I feel like this today, and I'm going to drop this. Send it out. But don't you feel like the? Re <laughs> but don't you feel like because he's able to do that with really honestly anything that he drops, even if he's a guest, he's one of those artists where like if he's a guest feature on your on your song, it's basically become his song, right? Don't you feel like he himself should like? There's a certain standard that you know that's a little bit higher that we have for him when it comes to, you know, when it comes to Drake. Like it's like you're you're number one, so. I'm going to expect, like, if you're going to release a, a body of work, that it's going to be like, oh, okay, like, it's in this, it's going to be something that's indisputable. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. You, and you know what? I would say we didn't get that th this time. Because Why? look look at how, what triggers <laughs> Drake, right? Right. He wasn't right. in beef with anybody. Mm. Like, publicly, like, when he was in beef with Pusha T and Meek, right? right. That, was, that was very, very in our face. So I feel like it challenged him more mm -hmm. to step it up and give you more. Right. He, there was no beef. So mm -hmm. he could just go back to the formula that always works and as an artist and behind a label. Mm -hmm. It's the smartest thing for the artist to do. But when you're a fan and you're looking for growth, mm -hmm. yeah, I can understand why anybody would want more. Jay-Z did give us that. And that was on... Um, a very different catalog, but you definitely saw the progression of his career and um, his life experiences. And that's the thing, because yeah. it's something that you can tell from Jay-Z from Blueprint to 444 mm -hmm. is that you're getting progression. You're getting his mindset on different on different things. Of course, you're going to get your luxury raps along the right. way, you know, callbacks to a lifestyle that you, that you have surpassed. Right. But you see evolution in that, you know, and bro, come on, fool. <laughs> like, 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 I'm not saying Drake has to release a 444. I'm just no. saying that it's like, but let's, know. but look, let's look at Drake. What's really going on other than the baby, right? Right. He's but living his that, best life. He is happy as hell. <laughs> but even, that's what I'm saying. Like, so even, even in that, right? Cause shoot, what's his name? Um, Jay Z is, is, is happy. I would hope so. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, 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 you know, you would you would expect you know for Jay Z as as you know happy as he is, he will still give you bars about okay, growing past you know different things. Okay, this is my like his guest feature. Like okay, this is my view views on people within the industry. Right? This is how you need to maneuver when these certain situations approach you. 
Um, the thing that he did with Nas, although it's like, uh, although I do expect that, although I do expect more from both of them when it came mm -hmm. to that song, I'm gonna just table that opinion for later. Yeah. Um, it's still like it's still some it's still in a different mode of like oh, okay well like I'm 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 grown so he a grown man raps you know right. uh, my my guy is basically my guy is basically what's happening is uh mm -hmm. is is my is basically my age so he can great, talk great, about great. a single dad like you know <laughs> you I'm are a funny. single dad bro like get into <laughs> that like you know like let's but let's, guess let's, what let me tell you something and Ezel I'm sure you. I know you're aware of this, right? right. We're talking about the industry. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I could say we probably saw more progression or better progression with respect to Jay-Z's catalog is because when I mentioned life experiences and how that helps you formulate your verses and your bars, right. we're talking about two men in com two different universes, the theoretically, like Jay-Z coming from the hood, um, being the drug dealer, the... the relationships that he had to um toggle mm -hmm. and that more of like being in the trenches like coming from brooklyn he was in a situation where at any point like you would watch your closest homeboy be shot and killed right so every day it was more of uh chasing the success to stay alive mm -hmm. i don't think that we can say that drake ever, <laughs> right. ever had those real life concerns mm -hmm. So I think but he, that's what. But, but he did. You know what? You're you're so right. But if there's one thing that he used to do that really made that made me um, appreciate him was the fact that he was able to uh, speak towards more so towards the common issues, like you know how is how like uh, oh you know I was in this relationship it didn't turn out yeah. so well I'm rapping about it things of that nature you know, right you know. And I think that's because that was his lifestyle, right? <laughs> but it's like now since he's separated more, more from that, it's like, right. yeah, you're yeah. Right. So Drake, Drake situation, just to wrap this up, right? Mm -hmm. This was a guy that came from Degrassi, entered right. the industry, had the ladies falling for him mm -hmm. in the strip club, spending his money, being in the company of young money. <laughs> so right. he was he wrote based on what he was seeing going on around him and the things that he started to appreciate, which was more of the life that, so that's what he continues to speak to and how much he's advanced as a multimillionaire. Right. But he gives you what it is for him. It's the ladies, a little bit of the sun, the haters. But at the end of the day, I got these bars. Like little Wayne said, as long as you put Drake on the hook, we're going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They can't help it. Right. And I so, can't blame them. It is what it is. If I got famous, right. I money to blow. There you go. <laughs> Getting it in. <laughs> letting these wheels, uh, letting these wheels fall all over your Exactly. Skin. My, <laughs> exactly my point. <laughs> yeah, look, you know, hey, you know, hey, I like, I love it here. I love it here. Oh, uh, <laughs> Man, let's get into let's get let's get yeah. further let's <laughs> okay. get further into you because we 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 went on that one for you know we we'll rap more about no, this no we'll problem def definitely like join Can't me join me for a Moon Man Moves Monday when you get a chance like of I, wanna, I definitely like I I enjoy that I enjoy okay. that. um but let's get into let's get more into you you know you won the sure. first lit black foodie event yeah. with your botanical gardens bodega yes um, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Now, talk to us about, you know, how, you know, accolades, you know, getting that type of acknowledgement, how does it impact your work? Um, it makes me want to go harder and be better right. because um, I, I want to be the best in anything that I do. And I know that there are people out there that are better than me. And I just want to meet that bar, meet the standard every time. So winning the competition was great, of course, right. but I, I went in there and that shout out to the family that supported me with that vision. Um, I went in there to win and it worked out in my favor. Um, the host made by K Kitchen, she gave us the rundown, how creative you could be. Um, the, the possibilities <laughs> were endless and I just went in 
to do it. So I, the, like you mentioned, it, the theme was a botanical bodega. So I wanted to feed the guests and the audience like that concept. I needed to sell that concept. So again, it, the food for me always goes back to when I would record, right? That you have one chance to make every 16 your best. So I apply that same concept to these meals like I have. And then it's, ev it's even more critical because we're talking about food. So the moment somebody tastes them, it doesn't take that long for you to realize that you don't like the way something tastes. Right. So <laughs> it was even, it's more of a challenge when it comes down to cooking because you only have that one opportunity with that person's palate to either please or displease. Um, yeah. So I went in there, I did the a taco, which a lot of um, friends, family, a lot of guests always like. It's one of my signature items. And I think I saw another homeboy in the room. Shout out to Model All Stars. I was asking around in my circle, like, what do you think I should make? Because I like to hear other people's feedback when it comes to, like, what, what I know they've had from me, things that I've served them, yeah. and what their favorites are. Because, again, just like music, if it doesn't appeal to the air, you're done. So they were like, taco. And I was like, are you guys serious? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, nah, you like your tacos be hitting. And I'm just like, okay. I was like, all right, so how can I like elevate this taco <laughs> to win this competition? Because again, the host is a baker, and majority of the participants there were bakers. She had sweet and savory, but there were a lot of bakers there. I I do not classify or call myself a baker. I do Certain items that I know I'm really good at and that I got great feedback from, but that I enjoy. So I was like, I have to really, really, really elevate this dish to compete against these bakers because I'm like, chances are the judges, maybe they want baked goods. So it's like, so whatever I make has to top that. All right. So that's, um, that's how that worked out. But yeah, to answer the question, it just makes me want to be better, go harder. Um, like I watch the video, I go, I review my recipes mm -hmm. and I like do a reel in my mind about how everything went out down the layout, how I serve the item. And I just think about, okay, next time, what could I have done better? What would, it, what would make it better? What, what are other ways to set up to make the presentation better. So it, it's, it's a constant um, involvement and desire to just be better every single time. Definitely, that's definitely. You know, uh, I wanna go into starting your uh, catering business. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, talk to us about some of the opportunities that it has afforded you. Um, I've been very blessed and I talk to my partner about this all the time. And my friends, my circle sometimes have to remind me about what I was involved in or what I did because I was fortunate enough that coming out of culinary school, I was able to do a residency with one of the top um, Korean chefs in New York City that also worked with the Food Network. Right. So I did my um, externship with her and it allowed me to be in other different kind of rooms and maybe expedited my journey because some of those rooms I was surprised that I even got there. So mm. um I did the food and wine festival where um Russell Simmons was the host. Mm -hmm. And um that was another opportunity where the food network they reached out to me and they were like, hey, would you want to be culinary lead for this event? And I'm like, of course, because that gave me more exposure. And um, it was opportunities like that. So I did a lot of work through the Food and Wine Festival with the Food Network and then just other connections, like other high-profile chefs may invite me to something or with Chef Esther, she did a lot of Bear Foundation events, which is um, a foundation designated to 
usually Michelin star chefs or high end chefs, the more popular chefs that you know from the Food Network. So I was able to do James Beard Foundation events, the Food Network events, the Food and Wine Festival as the culinary lead. And um, I also, I did catering for Queen of the Ring, two of their battle segments. Um, and that's with Babs, Bunny, and um, everyone at URL and Q QOTR. Yo, so let me ask you a question. Do you sure. watch Battle Rap? I do. <laughs> Yo, we are going to kick it. <laughs> I do. I really, and I say to myself, you know, I'm not that young anymore, but I'm still so in tune with the streets. I, I love it. I love it. Um, I was just, today is Saturday. I yeah. was just watching Battles Monday night, Tuesday. <laughs> Because it's important for me to speak to that, right? right. Um, I I haven't done a recent um, segment, but I have a podcast called Chopped and Cued. So again, everything plays on analogies and metaphors. So Chopped, I'm a chef, Chopped and Cued with the music, right? right? So I had a segment where I would go through artists' verses and break down the lyrics. And I thought that was something that people weren't really appreciating. And then my homeboy would always encourage me to do it because there's a stigma that females don't listen to lyrics, right? Right. And I knew that wasn't true for me. And I just came across this guy on TikTok who's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And he has like over 200,000 followers, young guy, young king. And I'm like, that is so crazy how this kid is doing this. And I'm like, I was doing this like two years ago. Right. So I, it's something that I'm um, definitely going to go back into mm -hmm. because with Battle Rap, more people joining that wave and um, appreciating lyrics. Like, I want to make sure that you guys, like, things aren't going over your head because it, it, it's scary. It's a, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot. Man. So I remember, I forget who said it was like some of my square work in a circle. I it was it was a whole geometry breakdown that I I'll never forget. And then um there was another oh my god my favorite one ever was um DNA uh okay. and uh, what's his name you know one where um K Shine I uh, just saw this guy I just saw him where he like I'm familiar with DNA um. Not K Shine so much. Man, they he uh he did a whole uh thing where he was uh yo, I will send you the link. I'm gonna send you the link. Please you do. gotta yo, you gotta watch this. And I promise, like, we'll come back we'll come back on Monday, we'll talk we'll talk about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It was it was phenomenal. Like, I mean, because 'cause I'm someone that I definitely wanna that, hear it then. Yeah, I like I when I say I go back and I replay bars just so I can you know, that's Listen, there are people in this live. That right. can comment and tell you that I be on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I, I re-listen. Like, going back to Drake and Jay-Z, right? We mm -hmm. got to re-listen to Jay-Z's verse. Yeah. You have to re-listen to that, right? Because yeah. Jay-Z's the guy that you sometimes have to listen three, four, five times because the gems be so intricate. But, yeah, when you love it, you love it. So I completely respect that, and I'm happy to hear that you – that you do it and it's not just me because sometimes I get so hyped because right. I'm like, yo, did you hear that? Right. <laughs> but and the thing is like, you know what's so crazy is the fact that you have to play it cool around people. But I love like talking to other like other yeah. music nerds because yeah. like, yo, fam, like run that one back real fast. Go back like 15 seconds. I'm so excited and there's so many different like lines going through my head that I can't even speak to, but I, I completely understand. It's like, it gives you chills, because you can be like, yo, this thing is a problem. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Brother. Oh, yeah, we got, yeah, we're going we gonna, we gonna to definitely do like, I would definitely, yes, let's do yeah. that Monday. Monday, all right, we on it. We on it. And um, it's also like, yeah, we on it, we on it. Um, I'm definitely going to make sure I listen to some stuff, because there's things that I would definitely want to reference, it's just because I'm like super hyped that I can't. <laughs> But, um, um, what do you feel like oh, we gonna this? We gonna transition back to the to cooking. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, no problem. 
we keep going. <laughs> Any music reference, we shoot off and down this tangent. Yeah, and I, right, and I'm right, right. It. I got to admit. Me too, no problem. But um, this uh, when it comes to you know you as well as your business you know what do you feel like is next you know how do you feel like you're going to change the game per se so what's next for me and what's been um the ever grinding goal is mobilizing dicey yt catered events right so i'm very bright vivid like i remember when i showed up to culinary school i was coming from work and they were like are you sure like you know, this is a lot of work. You don't look like the type. Like, basically, they said you don't look like the type that performs a lot of labor. And at that time, that was really true. <laughs> so, But I had made a decision that, no, this is what I want to do. And when I set my mind to a goal, that's that's just it. So the next level for me is mobilizing Dicey YP catered events via food truck. Not your typical food truck. Like, one where I want it to be almost as if when your famous artist drops their album at midnight. That's how I'm pulling up to your event. That's how I'm pulling up to the listening parties. That's how I'm pulling up to the baby shower, the gender reveal, the launches. That I wanted to be when you guys know that I have this truck, that y'all are like looking for me, like where's Dice? <laughs> like when people were chasing Pokemon around in the city. Yeah. <laughs> that is a concept for Dicey Wifey catered events because I specialize in sweet and savory. Um, I'm very passionate. I'm a true foodie. So I love to eat and I love um, playing with flavors. And I just want to be in a space where I don't have any restrictions with respect to how I can get my food to a client, to a customer, to a business. Because that is what I know is... Um, keeping me from meeting that next level. And it's only because I'm not able to be everywhere at once. Right. So independently, when I take on catered events, it's usually one or two. And I'm making those deliveries. Whereas if I have um, everything on the truck, being that I worked in industrial kitchens, um, commercial kitchens, I can fabricate so much more and get it to so many more people in one instance. So that's the next level for Dicey YP catered events. Okay, okay. So GoFundMe link is in my bio. And anyone who invests over, donates over $100 is automatically entered as an investor in which I want to pay it back. 2% return on your investment. Because fortunately, and I'm grateful for this all the time, um, I had a brief, a very brief residential stint with um, this service called Room 24K. And they, what they do is they provide private space for people to come in and dine and you can bring your own bottle, right? And then you have a private chef. So I went in there, I did a short stint with them. But the amount of people that reach out to me to book with them so that I could cook for them was a complete shock mm. because it two things happened number one i realized that there were so many more people following me and um aware of what i did and i wasn't prior to that and it also let me know that that was the way like people wanted a dedicated location to find me and then they would come and i was like this this is it this is where the money was at <laughs> So, um, I know I can do it. Like, I've done events where I made out really, really well. And I, I've always said, in learning that, because this has been a culinary journey, right? So, I document a lot of things for other young women and men that may be in the culinary industry for them to, like, have some kind of roadmap. Because I went into this blindly, and I do want to make sure that I'm giving back to the tribe and being a resource to the tribe, our people our people, our culture. Um, and I know that by doing that, they can see how they can be better or even skip a few steps, take less right. steps than I had to, to be great. But I've been in spaces where the revenue that I've attained within three hours, 
I, I know I found my niche. Right. So I was like, if I, if I, not if, when I have this truck. Yes. It's on and popping. So all you, all you in there, tell your friends, like, get to know me now. <laughs> to existence. That's going to happen. Right. Because the first year, I'm going to be on the truck for the second year. I don't. I won't need to be on the truck. You'll be seeing the truck, and you'll pull up, and it's my employee, because <laughs> mm. that's how lit it's gonna be. And I'm I'm excited about it. So most definitely, I can't. I honestly can't wait. No, you said over. Oh, uh, they donate over a hundred dollars. It's uh, you, a two percent return on their investment that I can guarantee. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. For sure. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, again, the link is in my bio. And they can go and make a donation. I'll see it. And then I list you because, again, the, the money is there. It's not hard to get. Just um, the truck is pricey. And I want something decent, um, coded, and permit. So when I take off, all I got to do is worry about restocking the truck. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. We gonna, like I said, we're going to speak that into existence. It's, it's definitely going to happen. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to go into, you know, the goal of the show. And, you know, okay. that is philanthropy. Guarding okay. the audience and putting it towards a charity or nonprofit that you care about. Okay. What, what charity or nonprofit would you like to spotlight today? And why is the cause that it faces so important to you? Um, I don't know if it would be a charity, mm -hmm. more so a business that oh. um, is established. Okay. It would be, off the top, it would be made by K Kitchen. And mm. I, yeah, because the Lit Black Foodie brand has done a lot for me um, with respect to accolades, being true, genuine, and like all around supporter. I would definitely want to see donations go her way because she does a lot for us. Like you, if you connect with this queen, Mm -hmm. You tell her your vision, your ideas. She has a great networking circle. Sorry. Um, very resourceful, very knowledgeable. And because I have a high regard for our people that are genuine about supporting each other, I would definitely highlight her. And because she had um, sponsorship and was seeking funds. And during that time... I I was in a space where I was taking some time away from social media right? to like really research um, some financial needs for the truck endeavor. So I wasn't able to support her in that way because I just missed it. And when we met on Thursday, when she had her wine and dine on Thursday and that she really like caught me off guard with, that situation. I, I knew I was coming to say something like about the win or whatever, but the whole award ceremony that she did just blew my mind. So she, Lit Black Foodie, is relocating to Atlanta, and we want to support our brothers and sisters that are in the business together, and we, we all need fun. So I would definitely, it would be Lit Black Foodie. Okay. As a business to um, sponsor, yeah. Most definitely. So, for those of y'all who are joining, uh, we are definitely going to be trying to sh throw some support behind Made by K Kitchen. And, uh, yeah, I, I love it. Uh, I, you know, the fact that people are taking time, the fact that you took time to shout out someone that has given, that has helped you, that has helped yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That, is a, that is a beautiful thing. And I, mm -hmm. I support I support that, um, especially when it comes to our tribe. You know, and I Absolutely. say I try because my son is Nigerian, Jamaican, and Creole. So, um, oh wow, yeah. So, what yeah. a blend! <laughs> hey, you think that's a blend? Check this out. He's also a Scorpio. Oh, yeah. That must be fun. Oh, right. Fun times. Fun. Just amazing. How old is he? Two. <laughs> oh, great. that's why you're saying it like that. It's been great. It's been great. Oh, um, well, congratulations. Thank you. It's a, it's a young prince. It's amazing. No, but two, this, this, two is tough. Man, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I went through it three times. So two two is a tough little 
you you did, and you had two yeah. of them at the same time going at the same damn time. At the same damn time. <laughs> yeah, it it was, it was a lot, but it, you know they're they're so inquisitive. They want to touch everything. They want to eat everything. You like really got to stay on top of them because yeah, like yeah. they have no sense of danger, no sense of threat. So. You know what's crazy is the <laughs> fact that we, as adults, should learn that from them, mm -hmm. right? Like, especially when it comes to like relentlessly trying to pursue something. <laughs> we, we, he really wanted to put this blue lollipop that he found underneath the couch in his mouth. In his mouth, and yeah. he was trying to get it okay. until he finally grabbed it, and I had to snatch it away. Right. You know, it's. So, you know what's really funny about that? First off, yeah. with toddlers, they'll eat more things off the floor than anything you give them in a bowl. That's number one. They'll put it on the floor. To eat it, yeah. To eat it. But the good news about toddlers is that their immune system is way stronger than ours. And that's why they can walk around with viruses and be unbothered, unplagued, and kill your ass. So, yeah. if you miss something... It's all right because he's gonna be fine either way. <laughs> he, he as long as it's digestible, they're gonna be fine. These children are resilient. <laughs> yeah, they really, they really, really are. They really are. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, um, but yeah, sexy. Make sure. Oh, I'm gonna. I actually kind of wonder though, because like his, his, uh, his grand, his grandmother is from New York. So I'm gonna check see whether or not y'all are related. At, at some Why point. Why you say that? Because you said you said uh, that your your mom is Jamaican. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> see, I don't know, man. I, it, I feel... She, my mother had um seventeen brothers. Whoa. So any anything possible. Anything is possible. And she only met four of them. So I I always try to be careful. Like when I was out in the trees, I'm like, Ugh. no, I... <sighs> it's crazy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, they do. Absolutely, kids are resilient. Them kids do it like they do whatever. They'll go through stuff that we could never withstand. <laughs> Bam. Right? Oh, ain't, ain't no way. Right. <laughs> just ain't no way. And they'll, they'll be fine. And they will be fine. Um, you know, we always like to, funny enough, speaking of the kids, and we always like mm -hmm. to uh, close out with words of wisdom for the next generation. Okay. So, um, you know, I want to, uh, I would like for you to speak to something if it is okay with you, and if not, mm -hmm. Let me know, and I'll, I have a, I have a, I always have a backup plan. Okay. Um, what do you got? But what words of wisdom would you have for someone that was that was dealing with the loss of a parent? Um. Did you know that my mom passed away? You know. Um, did no. you see that? Okay. No. I'm gonna answer the question. I'm sorry to counter with a question. I'm just <laughs> curious as to. No, no, no. The the things that I found were um, uh, uh, the you winning the you winning the um. There's something else. Oh my god! The wing, mind. the wing championship. Yeah, the oh, one wing also champ. The that you worked with uh that you worked with uh people as? from the work. Um, oh, okay. As as well as um you um. Uh, well, both the the your your cult, the um lit food event the mm -hmm. as well as there was something else that um oh yeah the um the pol the political thing um you talked to uh someone that was running as independent for the twenty twenty election oh yes yeah shout out to sis thank you mm -hmm. yes yeah. yes um I wanted to do that. Good, going to go right into your question, but I wanted to do that because, again, for the tribe, it's important that we're aware. Right. We need to, um, because they hide a lot of things from us, right? And it's important to know all your options, despite what the media is just um, propagating to us. So that that's another a reason why I wanted to have that conversation. Her name was Jade. Right. Um. What I would tell someone who lost a parent. It, you're going to be devastated. And I can never tell you that it gets a bit easier to acknowledge the loss, right? But 
when you lose a parent, it's like they take a piece of you with them. So you, there, there are times where you'll feel like you can never move past the loss, like you can't even function. Um, you'll have moments of absenteeism. These are all things that I experienced losing my mom. Um, I remember watching her memorial service on DVD and Ezel when I watched it. It was as though I was seeing it, the service, for the first time. Because there were several people that came up to speak on the altar to speak on behalf of my mom. And I had no recollection of it. Meanwhile, I'm looking at myself sitting in the pew. So I had totally mentally checked out. And that lasted almost half a year. And I pat myself on the back to being highly intellectual and like being able to remember things, maintain bits of information. When my mom passed away, it's like my brain was non-existent. And it took time. It took going to culinary school and having something that I could focus deeply and passionately on to replace um, the memory of the loss because I was just working like I had a normal nine to five. I was a mom and I would speak to my mom all the time. I would take her grocery shopping every weekend. I was always over there. So when you, when you lose that, like that, this major figure in your life, it, it's hard to just snap back and the potatoes, sorry. I'm also making some mashed potatoes. Um, it's hard for you to snap back. So I would say try to find something that you can get involved in. Try to memorial, find a, a means where you can memorialize the loved one that you lost. It's very, very helpful. Um, find a support group that speaks to grief because in our community, that's something that we are... Um, don't have a lot of education on with respect to how long grief can last and um, the stages of grief, as well as what you experience in each one of those stages. So that's something that I would definitely encourage someone if you, if you lost your parent, especially if, especially if you guys were really, really close and you, you feel like you're in a space where you're no longer functioning because that is very, very real. And it could be very, very scary. And, um, to encompass all of that, you have to stay prayed up. I'm not saying you have to be a religious person, but you need to speak to that higher power to keep you able, able-minded and able-bodied <laughs> because the mind is a very, very strong thing. And these voices come in and you need, you need prayer and you need a support system. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for for opening uh, opening up and you know giving that 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 knowledge and that advice. Of course. Really, um, you are so so amazing as a person. Um, oh, thank you so much. I, 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 <laughs> and I'm speaking nothing but light, life, blessings upon you, your family. Um, you know, uh, especially as you navigate this. Uh, and I will definitely be ta directing people when I post this video to your uh, to your page to help with the GoFundMe but, and also to uh, donate to Made by K Kitchen as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm happy you <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really am. <laughs> hey, man, I, you know, it, it, look, I don't like a lot of people, but... You know, I got that feeling from you <laughs> when I would watch you. <laughs> like I, I, I'm just, you know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm honestly a very, I'm a very kind person mm -hmm. who's had his kindness um, taken, taken advantage. I, and, I get it. I get it. You know, which is which is funny because you know, like when I people from from New York, they're the ones that give me the most advice on you. Know, you got to stop that, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. but it's so hard. Like, it is. It but, is. And it's it's definitely a work in pro 
progress. And it's because we're coming from a long line, like a lineage of trauma, right? And then in this new age with social media and trying to compete with forces that theoretically don't exist, it's, it's a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves. And um, the, kind, the kind of people always get hurt the most because we always want to give back and be there for people. And sometimes it's not always reciprocated, but I'm too in learning to um, not let it change me, who I am, because I am very kind-hearted. I, I love to help, and I'm very, very sensitive. So, But people, they'll, they'll take advantage of it. They really will. You know, I saw, um, and I was having a discussion about this too as well, and uh, it was a post that said, you know, you got to remember the world won't reward you for being for working on yourself, for trying to be a good, mm -hmm. or even for being kind, mm -hmm. you know, it, the that's that's you, once you get rid of that, you know, you got you really have to intrinsic, you have to be doing it for for you, yeah, and um, absolutely, it's a, real, it's a real thing because I it is like I realized like no man like at the when I was asked you know why do you do these things well what's the point of these interviews. Well, one, because I really actually do want to help connect people um, and help people make changes within different communities, you know, through uh, through donating to different charities and nonprofits, as well as, you know, they themselves, you know, feeling, hey, you know what, I'm going to get up, go out one day and actually go volunteer with that. Or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just. I did that, too. I do that, too, because well, for me and everything that I'm trying to do, this past summer, I did um, a volunteer event with a group whose name, Writers for Rights. Thank you, God. Okay, Writers for Rights. And there are, there are nonprofit groups that goes out within our community, and they give out brand name produce and um, shelf life goods to the community. And I enjoyed that endeavor so, so much because, one, it's food. So it speaks to, it's um, a connection aligned to what I do. And knowing, coming from Flatbush, we were in um, Crown Heights for that event. I know the community. I know the people. Um, it's good. It's a good feeling. And you are blessed. You are blessed when you give to others. Even if it's your last. Like, if you really believe it, if you're a really genuine person, I encourage you. Give your last to somebody and watch how God rewards you. Just today, right? I don't want to drag this on. I don't know if you're on a time frame. But um, I'm self-funded. I work. I have a full-time job. And I have the whole business. Right. Um, and I have to, like, watch costs, watch my dollars. Because these coins have to hit so many different buckets. And Thursday night when we were at the Wine and Dine with Lit Black Foodie, there was this young queen there, young girl. I thought she was so cute, so full of life. And um, she was serving the drinks for us. And very nicely, in, in no, no way, when we were leaving, she tapped her tip jar. And I respected it. Because she was super pleasant, but I didn't have cash at the time. Mm -hmm. So I told her to DM me. And she did, right? And I know a lot of times, like, we've been in circumstances where people were like, oh, just DM me or hit me up like I got you. Yeah. And you never see or hear from these people again, right? Oh, yeah. So I've been there, and I'm like, it's not a good feeling. And for your own people, why not? She sent me the DM. I, I actually, not that I forgot about her, but I, for, I forgot, right? It slipped my mind. But she sent me the DM, and I went into my account, and I sent her something. And something was like, really? Like, you're going to send? I'm like, yeah, that's what I feel. Looking at my account, like, it, it's like the other side of me is saying, really? Like, you know, you had such a... I'm like, no, but this is how I feel. And I, honest to God, I said, no, God got me. Right. This morning I woke up. No lie, this is a testimony that I, I thank God. I had 300 extra dollars in my account for something that happened that I completely forgot about, Right. Right. And it hit my account. And I, even though that might have been um, inevitable, 
I was like, look at God. Because I gave with a pure heart, I was rewarded 50 times over. So give, give your last and leave it to God. And again, I'm not a religious person. I just know what I know. And from where I've been coming from, I was homeless. Real, real talk, like waiting in the park yeah. for my mother, for my homeboy's mom to come home because she worked overnight so I could go sleep on his floor. That's how real it was. Yeah. So when I see people like trying to come up or if they need something, I'll be the first one to want to help and want to do because God has always showed me that he will still look out for me. That's most true. So just give, give, be kind, be good, be true. And behold, you will see the reward. That's it. That's all I can say. It's not much. It's not, it's, it's easier to be true and be you than anything else. And just have a good heart. Be kind. Don't just say it, like really mean it. Be kind. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, we definitely going to, we, you know, I've enjoyed this, sincerely speaking. Um, and I, I honestly can't wait to uh, further our relationship. Um, I would love to, especially when it comes down to these bars. Right, to these, I, <laughs> I was like, yo, fam, like, uh, you were doing you were doing a lyric breakdown and here I am like riding home from work every day, like rewinding tracks and like really just re listening. Like, and we could talk about it. Yo. Uh, so Monday, Monday. So let me know more about it. But in, in between that, because I'm really dedicated. I'm gonna listen to some stuff that I'm like, this was fire and the world needs to know. <laughs> yeah, but facts, like oh, I'm with like, it. I'm with it. Like, but yeah. like I'm gonna definitely send you that battle between K. Uh, it was, was it DNA and K. Sean? I'm gonna. It, it's like I promise you won't. By the end of by the end of it, you're gonna be in your head every time you think about it. You're gonna be like, get that Professor Sean, and I right. promise you, you don't you don't get the reference now. But when you watch this, you will get it, and you will be like, you will hit me up and be like, yo, fam, and I'm gonna right. be like, I know, <laughs> like, yeah. but. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're going to, we'll, we'll wrap. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank I'm, you. I had so much fun. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you did. Uh, we'll definitely be in contact. Absolutely. Thanks again. Shout out to everybody that joined the room. <laughs> if your favorite chef, Dice, you guys can find me at DiceyWifey underscore chef. And um, I'm here for all your culinary needs. And that's that. <laughs> Facts. You have a good one now. You too, Ezel. Thanks again. No problem. Okay, bye-bye. Man, oh man, that was Dicey Wife. Y'all definitely check her out. Um, this, was, that was, this was fun. This was fun. Um, y'all, I got to give a special announcement. Man, I have a new sponsor for the month, and that is Body by Trini. Definitely check her out. Uh, that is a... So so much, so much, so much stuff that she has on sale as far as uh body butters for men, uh even you know, something to help bit with your with the little strat with the little scragglies, you know, that can't connect, you know. For those of y'all with the struggle beards like myself, don't worry, we're gonna fill these patches in one day. We're gonna give it to God. Um but yeah, she definitely has quite a quite a few things. Definitely check that out. Um yeah, I will, I will be tagging her at the bottom of this video as well. We are going to throw our efforts behind Made by K Kitchen. Please, please, please donate as you can to her. And um Yeah, man, we're gonna pray on 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 Dice getting her uh getting that getting that food truck and we're gonna definitely try to invest as much as we can as well because we wanna see we wanna see her succeed. Um y'all I'm Ezo Moon. I'm not uh <laughs> and my cousin, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna have to, yeah, we're gonna give these patches in the beer to God. Um, I'm Ezel Moon. I'm not doing it unless it's fun and it helps people. I sincerely appreciate you guys for, for being with me this evening. Um, I love you all and I'll talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>
Purchase my book, Purple Mike Wants a Bike, at Amazon.com. You can find it there. Just type in Purple Mike, type in Ease of the Moon, and it'll pop up. If you guys want to follow me, no, not even if, go follow me at Ease of the Moon underscore on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Ease of the Moon, and I'm not doing it unless it's fun and it helps people.